China has the money and the opportunity and the vision for the investment at the moment. You would have the opportunity that China's creating rather than not have it. The Barossa Valley, an hour northeast of Adelaide, is arguably Australia's best known wine region. Recognised globally for its big, bold reds, it has a name taken from Spain and a heritage most associated with German immigrants. Now it's the Chinese who are making their mark. Welcome everyone. Here is our historical champagne bottles. Please come in. Groups of high net worth, seriously wine-interested Chinese visitors often take tours through Chateau Yaldara. The attractive winery is also now Chinese-owned, bought four years ago for $15.5 million by businessman Arthur Wong. Mr Wong, why were you interested in Yaldara? After Yaldara, I was interested in the Yumidian in China, they love their nouveau chateaus. Across the many winemaking provinces, freshly minted castles are a flashy entree into the largely Western world of wine. The Barossa's Chateau Yaldara is more restrained, but boasts a heritage not commonly found in the Middle Kingdom. Once a flour mill, the stone buildings have been housing the winery since 1947. While the new Chinese owner largely lives with his family in Sydney, General Manager Anthony Grundle is Barossa-based. So, Anthony, how does the Chinese ownership work on a day-to-day -day basis? So, on a day-to-day -day basis, we have, uh, we have 60 staff here at Yildara, so 10 of those are Chinese very, on various visas and, and are residents. So they deal with Arthur on a day-to-day -day basis um, and they're the primary sales team. So um, they work with head office in China um, and facilitate all the requirements from there. Outside of that, Arthur and I meet on a monthly basis and work out the strategy side of, their, side of things with him. And it's really my job to make sure that I'm delivering on what they need for the Chinese market whilst focus on building the brand here in, in Australia. Chateau Yaldara exports 90% of what it produces to China. Last year, that was nearly 2 million bottles, making it the second highest exporter from Australia in terms of value. It's sold under the brand 1847, a nod to the winery Arthur Wong bought before he purchased Chateau Yaldara. And importantly, the wine is only sold through the 200 or so bricks and mortar stores the company has established across China. Basically, our consumers over there know that we don't sell our wines online through the 1847 network. And if they're, they're buying the wines outside of our network, then they know that, that um, there's a possibility that the product actually might be counterfeit. Anthony Grundle says that certainty of supply and provenance has built consumer confidence and the company is now exporting four times what it was before Mr Wong took over. So given that 90% of what you produce here uh, is marketed to China, do you ever get concerned that that is risky in itself because it's one market? Certainly there's been a lot of discussion about the Chinese bubble and, and, and the concerns about the wine industry over there and certainly there's a commercial reality to wanting to spread your income bandwidth away from, from one primary market. So part of my focus here is, is in part reintroducing the Chateau Yaldara brand back to Australia. Chateau Yaldara is one of several Barossa wineries now in Chinese hands. A little up the road at Simaki, the vineyards, winery and residence 
recently sold for almost $7 million. Hamera is Chinese-owned, as is Ozswan on the outskirts of Tanunda. So James, how have you seen the Barossa change over the last few years in terms of foreign investment? Well, we've definitely seen an increase in the, uh, the visibility of the Chinese investment coming into, into the valley. Uh, that's been a, a mix of not only vineyards, but also vineyard pro, uh, winemaking uh, facilities as well. And so as our demand or export-led demand has, has come from China, that's also prompted the investment. Chief Executive Officer of the Barossa Grape and Wine Association, James March, maintains there is still only 5 to 10 per cent Chinese ownership in the valley. And it's a place quite accustomed to embracing different cultures. You know, Barossa started its life out as a, as a multicultural experiment. You know, we had uh, Silesian immigrants mit mixing with the, the English and the Scottish, and over a number of years we've not only welcomed, um, you know, investment uh, but also people moving to the area. Getting accurate figures on overseas investment in the wine industry is actually pretty tricky. The Foreign Investment Review Board doesn't isolate vineyards and wineries in its statistics. They all come under the broad banner of agricultural land. Around 13.6% of total agricultural land is foreign held, about 2.5% by Chinese residents. Anecdotally though, those that have been around the wine industry for a while say all the new interest is coming from China. Good morning, welcome to Langley Co. This is Beg. This Adelaide-based company moment, deals in the sales of wine businesses and vineyards nationally. Hello, Steve speaking. If you're looking in the Barossa, you want high-end Shiraz and, you know, depending on the size of the vineyard, uh, you're probably looking at about 130 to 150,000 hectare. Director Stephen Strawn says he's been receiving calls from Chinese buyers for a few years now. I'd say probably 50% of the, the inquiries we get into our firm would be from Chinese. Uh, and I can look at the transactions that I've personally done in the last little while and six out of the last seven have been to Chinese parties. So. So that's a, a strong indication of where the activity right now is. If you're looking at another The former Winemakers say, Federation Valley, chief executive that, says uh, just as the wine market has matured in China, so have the potential purchases of vineyards and wineries. And so probably five years ago when this started to accelerate, maybe even a little bit longer, um, it was all roads lead to the Barossa. Um, and the typical conversation would be, I want to buy um, uh, Penfolds. Uh, a lot of the original parties were looking for trophy assets, but now we're seeing the Chinese investors a lot more sophisticated in terms of what they want. The Chinese have taken to wine like no other nationality. They are particularly partial to reds, and Australian wines are second only to French in terms of their top-end preferences. So much so that we exported 51% more wine in the year to March 2018 than we did in the preceding year. More than a billion dollars worth to a single country. That's a record. While the Chinese grow their own grapes and have their own wineries, the demand for overseas bulk wine to supplement their supplies is outstripping the ability to deliver at the same low cost. I would say the last 12 or 18 months the big change has been the Chinese parties are looking to come in and secure commercial vineyards in Australia um, and they're doing that purely because they're finding it's difficult to get hold of uh, or get access to, to inexpensive bulk wine which is how they've built their businesses in the past. If there was a single symbol announcing this new player on the fruit block, it would be this. Just outside Mildura, construction is underway on a very large winery. It's due to be up and running early next year and has a permit to process more than 80,000 tonnes of grapes. Owned by the publicly listed Weilong, the company raised $120 million through a share placement to fund its Australian expansion. If you look at 
the last 10 years in Australian wine, I can't think of an investment of that magnitude um, in terms of a new winery or an expansion of a winery that's happened. Um, so it is quite a significant investment uh, compared to where the industry has been. To supply the grapes, the winery is planting madly. The vines are overwhelmingly red grape varieties and every single drop of wine they produce will head back to China. We are talking huge dollars. It's an investment somewhere between 70 and 100 million dollars by the time they're finished. And um, I mean, it's big dollars. Due to the Chinese government's blocking of all ABC media broadcasting, Weilong Grape Wine Company refused to speak on camera with Landline. Glenn Milne was mayor of Mildura when the project first came to the city's attention. He's happy to speak about the flow-on benefits for the region. That's extremely important. Um, it'll be, we, we've already got two of the biggest wineries in the Southern Hemisphere. This will be a third one around the same size. So a hundred jobs, uh, 100 part-time jobs, 100 full-time jobs. You're um, looking at a big impact on a community. Stephen Strawn has been around long enough to know it's risky for the industry to rely too much on one market. In terms of your question about whether I'm concerned about it, yes, I think I am and I think many people are. But you would have the opportunity that China's creating rather than not have it because it's built that sustainability back into the industry. China has the money and the opportunity and the vision for the investment at the moment. 10, 20 years ago it was America. Prior to that it was you know, Greater Asia, a bit Japan and, and whatnot. The wine industry is quite boom and bust. I've really enjoyed having you guys come out here and make... The Chinese investment in the, in the Brussels Valley in particular has solidified the market and given it confidence to move forward. Thanks for joining me to make your wines with us here at 1847 Wines. Cheers. Cheers.